Do you hate yourself? I sure do. I'm making a video on roguelikes. Jokes aside, I do love roguelikes. It's one of the genres of game that I can always fall back on to have a good time. With so many different games each adding their own unique take to the genre, it's nigh impossible to be unable to find one that you enjoy. But what makes a good roguelike? This was the question I asked myself when I sat down and thought on what roguelikes are my favorite, and in taking this time to reflect, I found three different qualities and three different genres of roguelikes that I would consider good roguelikes. They fall into the categories that I have made up for this video, but we're going to go with it, called the good, the great, and the funny. Now, I do want to point out that while yes, this video is an opinionated piece, I do think there is some amount of truth to what I am saying, as these games I will be talking about are also well known for the aspects that I bring up. So first off, we have The Good. For me, this is Risk of Rain 2. Risk of Rain 2 is a third-person roguelike following a rescue crew sent to the planet Petrichor 5 after receiving a distress signal from a ship that crashed there some time ago. We get to play as a handful of survivors, each with very different kits, and with so much there's bound to be someone you enjoy. This is the first part of a good roguelike, a base kit and character diversity. Having this wide cast of skills and characters to choose from means I can consistently come back to play this game, which is another big part of why this game is considered a good roguelike. Heavy replayability. I can come back to this game whenever I want and have a good time. While this game doesn't fall under great for me and it's only good, this is the game I do have the most hours in due to said replayability, and the characters and that aspect of it are a huge part of it. Each character falls under a different niche. Say you like being a big tanky boy and beating the living shit out of someone. Then Loader or... are your go-to. You a fan of taking a step back and playing at range, picking off enemies? Hunter and Railgunner are just for you. Enjoy shooting people with guns? Multi and Commando are right up your alley. You don't want to play the game? Engineer is Engineer. And that's only about half the cast. There's still a good seven or so characters left to choose from, each fitting a very different playstyle. Now, along with this diverse cast of characters, we also have a wide variety of foes as well, ranging from little beetles, to big beetles, to bigger beetles, to God, and also Gup. Gup is there. There's enough enemy variety in this game that, while I can learn what every enemy does, I don't get bored of seeing them, because there's enough consistency and variety between them. Along with the enemies, there's a lot of really fun bosses. Now, RR2 has two types of bosses. We have teleporter bosses, which spawn whenever you activate a teleporter, a mechanic that allows you to progress the run, and then the final bosses. As of this video's release, there are three final bosses, and they rank as follows in my enjoyment of them. The Voidling is a secret final boss hidden away by some pretty odd means, but if you get to him, get ready for a mixed experience. Large health pool and big hitbox. What he has in stats also has in boring attacks. He does three things. Balls? laser or big laser and does nothing different in each of his three phases sad as well because aesthetically he is my favorite boss being a ocean space void crab thing next up for me is otherwise known as the false sun he's a tough boss when you fight him since compared to the final boss of the base game you fight him with one stage loss of loot i haven't fought him much yet since he's a much newer boss than the other two but at the moment i do like him he's a really cool fight however he falls short of the King of Nothing, Mithrix. So, with our big three parts of what a good roguelike is, being replayability, character kits, and enemy variety, obviously, number four, you have to have Mithrix. Why? Well, dear viewer, in my opinion, this is one of the best bosses I've ever encountered playing a roguelike, and probably one of the best I've ever encountered in all my days of playing games. Risk of Rain enemies hit hard, chase you down, do scary things like this. and shoot at you at range, but not many enemies are fast, and the few that are are so weak and easy to kill that it's not that much of a problem. And by the time you get to stage 5 or even in a loop or two, no enemy can ever come close to catching up with you. Except for one. Mithrix. He's fast, having almost near instant movement and his hammer. Let's just say you're only surviving one or two hits in this, and then you die! He pulls no punches, and with his arena on the moon, surrounded by pure isolation, this king of nothing is going to remind you why he is king. So, good bosses, replayability, good enemies, and cool characters, it seems like this game has it all. However, there definitely are things in this game that make me put it into the good category, and not in a great category. To explain that, I have to introduce you to what I consider a great roguelike, Hades 2.
I know Hades 2 isn't even in full release, but a lot of the aspects that make this game good also made Hades 1 good. It's just that with 2, there's a lot more refinement in certain aspects. And it also has Hastia. I love her so much, so it's better. But Raccoon, you might ask, what sets this apart above RR2? Well, for me, the biggest part is a good story. Risk of Rain 2 doesn't really have a story you can progress, it just has logs to read and find details about. While the underlying story of Risk of Rain 2 is very cool, it's nothing compared to the story of Hades 2, which, like I said, is not even finished yet. But the parts that are there are amazing. And while I would love to info dump on the lore of Hades 2, I'm going to restrain myself and only give a small summary as it's not necessary to do the whole thing here. So, uh, this is, this is a bad idea. I recorded dialogue explaining Lord Hades. Instead, I thought it'd be funny if I MS painted it. Ready, set, uh, go. You are, uh, this. This is, this is Milenoi. You are the daughter of Hades, who's angrier, and Persephone, who's awesome. Big eyes. Uh, they birth you, and Kronos, big evil, he's a triangle, comes along, and he's like, time powers and they're dead or they're not dead they're trapped in time and so you, the house Hades taken over by Kronos you flee because you're saved by uh, circle bowtie lady Hecate she's magical she's the goddess of magic I think I don't remember exactly and she raises you as the perfect warrior to be able to now now you get a fucking whatever magic staff and now you can kill Kronos. But wait, there's more. You also need to make friends along the way with the other gods. They're like, we're a bunch of lines. We'll give you boons in exchange for you killed Kronos. You killed this guy over here. And so once you, you can kill him and then it's like, oh, well, guess what? Time can't be stopped, bitch. I'm back. And he's back. And he's not much stronger, but he's back. And you gotta beat him. And then you just keep going, and you get new weapons, and it's like, ooh, new weapon, new spells, and you gotta figure out a way how to undo his magic. But wait, now you can go to the surface, because guess what? Children of Hades couldn't go to the surface before, uh, as stated in the last game with Zagreus. But now you can, because you're a witch, you ain't need no fucking magic bitch shit, magic bitch. Whatever that means. And now you're like, oh, I'm going to the surface now. Oh. This is all the surface. It's, this is America. America. Uh, yep, and then well, you're here, and now, uh, and that's where the game story kind of ends right now. Thank you for watching. This is Glint Glob Glint. I, <laughs> I just finished. I, uh, the Emma's Paint section. If you want a good story for Hades 2, go play the game yourself or go look a synopsis. This is not even fucking close to the actual, <laughs> the actual story. I'm sorry. Continuing on with the video. At the moment, this is all we've got in terms of a story. But the game is once again not done yet, but what we have, I'm already so invested and excited, and it's so good. But what sets this apart from Risk of Rain 2 specifically for me, the characters. Risk of Rain 2 only has a handful of characters with fleshed out personalities, whereas Hades, everyone has such fun and cool traits that make them a joy to be around, except Eris, I want to drown her. My personal favorite character is Moros, Doom Incarnate, because his personality is Wet Dog, and I love him. So, a great roguelike has a good story, yes, but another aspect of that story that makes it so important to being a great roguelike is that it concludes. Now, this applies more to Hades 1 than 2, but with Hades 1, there was a certain point where there was no real reason to keep playing outside of the gameplay, and there's satisfaction in beating the game. Hades 1 ended, and that's amazing. While it has replayability, it's not infinite, say like what Screen 2 is. What else sets this apart? Well, uniqueness in the actual gameplay. While Risk of Rain 2 has a crazy amount of items, characters, and skills for those characters, all those items are often small effects that add up. None really change the way each character plays, it just makes you stronger. In Hades, you don't have as many items as you get in RO2. You actually don't have items at all, you have boons, gifts from the gods that grant new passives or change one of your three attacks. It might not sound like much in depth, well, only three attacks, but your playstyle changes mid run when certain boons are gotten. For example, early on, I'm just swinging this axe around all willy-nilly, but then boom, I get a boon from Apollo that makes my special big. Well, now I'm going to set my playstyle around that attack. And hey, later on, I can get boons that pair well with the original boon. Now I have the big special, and then I get an item that allows me to cast it quicker. Then I get a boon that lets me recharge my mana. Oh boy, time to destroy reality again. The next run, I get a boon that makes my normal attacks do knockback. 
Well, now I'm looking for a boon that lets me dash better or move faster so I can basically juggle enemies. And this is only for one of five weapons, and I've only mentioned, like, two of the boons from two types of gods. And there's, like, I think nine or ten different gods you can get boons from with all different mechanics. What I'm getting at is that each run, your playstyle is unique. It makes each run feel more personal, more handcrafted, and not just a linear experience of getting stronger. This isn't to say that RR2 is bad for the way it handles items, it's just that, for me, it sets Hades above in the gameplay category. Hades 2 also has Synergy, which, if you don't know, is when items or boons you get work together to make something new. Risk of Rain 2 doesn't have this, with items being very numbers-focused and not changing around core mechanics. Items that go well together are boring. For example, you fire a rocket. Now you fire three rockets. You crit. Now you get a little faster attack if you crit. And like, yeah, they work well, but you're going to get these items in most runs anyway, so it's not like there's uniqueness to the synergy there. Hades 2, boons can begin to pair together, and some of the fun I had from this game was learning which boons I can pair together that go well and experimenting. Uh, editor here, I do just also want to add in the fact that uh, Hades 2, an average amount of boons you'll get per run is only around 15, versus Risk of Rain 2, the average amount of items you'll get is about like 50, 60. So there has to be more deep variety in the items you get within Hades 2, whereas Risk of Rain 2, you might get the same item twice and it won't matter too much. So right now, all that sets Hades 2 above Risk of Rain 2 is its synergies, item mechanics, and its story. Which, looking at it, isn't too much, as again, I do want to point out I love Risk of Rain 2, I don't dislike it at all. But as a game to compete, it fails to Hades 2 in the sense of being a great versus good roguelike. But not by much. Before we get into the funny, I want to talk on what I think are the qualities of a bad roguelike. Now, I don't like being negative, I find it very draining and not fun. But I feel like this fits well into the video to give you all a view into what I think are bad roguelikes. Splatoon 3 is not a roguelike, it's a team-based shooter, and I love this game. A friend of mine recommended it to me a few months ago, and I've been in love ever since. Splatoon 3 has an expansion called Side Order, which adds a new single-player experience in the form of a roguelike. Now, the good thing this expansion does is the music and story, and the gameplay is pretty fun too. But then why do I call this a bad roguelike if I think it's fun? Well, that's due to all of the parts of it that make it a roguelike being short of a good roguelike. Let me explain. This game suffers from number syndrome, which is something I made up just now, but basically what I mean when I say that is, it's when a roguelike has all its progression to be sad, boring numbers instead of interesting things that change the way you play. And that's okay if only some of the upgrades are number-centric, but every upgrade in this game is a minuscule number increase. Man, one point up on the chance to drop at the thing that I can use to kill people with my... Oh. Where's the spice? Where's the pizzazz? That's right, there isn't any. There's very little enemy variety as well. Difficulty ramps up by just having more enemies. It's not good progression of difficulty. With no unique item stats outside of the number go up, this means that the only thing that makes your run unique is your starting item. And guess what? None of the items change the guns, so it's the same experience each time. There's no unique items to each weapon. Oh, and the cherry on top, you never feel that strong either. You can never get lucky and snag a hot booty killer upgrade that makes you silly strong, nor can you get runs where you are broken. No, because fuck you, no fun. So each run feels the same, and you never feel that strong or powerful at any point. I don't hate side order. Contrary to my thoughts so far, I actually think it's really fun, and with good music, a cool story, and decent gameplay outside of my stupid issues with it, it's great. But it felt necessary to voice my issues with that, so I could show you what is probably my favorite roguelike ever, The Binding of Isaac Repentance. So I don't really know the public's opinion on this game, but for me, this is the pinnacle of roguelikes, and I've got so many silly, stupid reasons why. But I'll start with some of the smaller ones. The big one is character, enemy, and variety. There are 34 playable characters, and while not all of them have super unique differences between them, a ton do. For example, forget shooting enemies, whack them with your femur. Want more items? Fuck it, read a book. In terms of enemies, there's over 300 monsters. Like, that's insane. It's ridiculous. And some might say that's a bad thing. Too many things to learn. I say it's fun not to know what the hell an enemy's gonna do to me. It's fun to just watch it explode sometimes. There's also over a hundred bosses. With that, there's so many different floors, each with unique aesthetics, tons of routes to take and endings to find. There's so much going on. And to some, it might be too much, might be too bad because it's too much. And fair point, but for me, I'll gladly journey into my mother's womb 
which just so happens to be the entrance to heaven, where I then fight a suffocated baby and mega Satan. Yep, that's all in the game. I'm not joking. And on that topic, I love the humor, lore, and general vibes of this game. It's so dumb and silly, like, at its core. I'm pretty sure this is a game about religious trauma, and someone else out there has probably already done a very good deep dive into it and why it's good. I'm not here to discuss that. I'm here to laugh at the silly poop named Dingle. Thank you very much. So, pretty cool visuals, sick-ass track, like, it's so good. This game is silly, cool, it's got wild variety, but there's one, one more thing that sets this game high, high above the rest. And that is its items. Now, there is an entire section of my script that was going to be dedicated to this part of this game. It is insane and how in-depth it is. But instead of explaining it to you, I wanted to show you. So I'm going to turn this video over to a live raccoon, unscripted, and they're going to explain how this game's items work for you. I hope they do it well. I hope... It works the way I hope it does. We'll see. All right, hello. This is this is me, like five days after recording everything else for this video. I kind of forget what was going on, and I am lazy enough to not look back. Oh, I need to update my computer. Ah, that's fine. I plan to do something like this, and I know what I want to do, so it'll work out fine. But what we're gonna be doing is, and a lot of this probably won't be in the video. I'm going to do a run of Isaac, we're going to get myself a few items off the bat, and I want to prove to you how broken this game can get. I want to shatter this reality, and to do that, I need three items. Because these three scare me, because one of them tends to break my game, I want all three. And we're going to test it together, and we're going to experience this. Now, before we do all that, I do want to explain the item system in this game, because it is very complicated. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into a run, and just I'm going to explain that thing to you. So, for example, every item has a list of rules, and this isn't how it is in the game code. I don't really know how it works legitimately. I know how to describe it in a way that makes sense to me, and I hope to you as well. What happens is every item has effects. So, for example, if I give myself Sad Onion, and I hold Tab, and I look at it. Sad Onion, up tiers, right? This is, a, this is a mod I have that describes the item. But basically, all these are rules. These items give rules. So my tiers are up. I fire a little faster now, right? Now, there's certain things that give multipliers. For example, give myself... Um... Prop... No. Sign. Polyphemus. A 0 0.42 fire rate negative multiplier. Right? But more damage. So, my fire rate's lower. And now, for example, if I give myself Sad Onion again, instead of a plus 7, only a plus 37 because I have that negative multiplier. Everything has rules, right? Now, these are very early rules, right? These are basic items that don't do much, right? So, oh, wow, big damage. Scary. Where it gets crazy is when items have rules that are kind of weird and mismatched with other weird rules because this game tends to... Rarely does this game just deny a rule. Like, no, not many items override other items. It does happen, obviously, but not often. What happens instead is these two rules now combine to make something nonsensical. Um, and there's a build I want to show you real quickly, so if I just remove... Ugh. So that's one, right? Is it... Is it Cricket's body that breaks it? I think it is. It's Cricket's body. It's It just doesn't stop. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> so that's six items, right? In a run where you get probably like, what, 30-something, 40... Let me make sure this is recording. So, what these do, Cricket's body, when your tears hit something, they split. Parasite, when your tears hit something, they split. Bones, when they hit something, they split. So, this is, this is, this is one shot. Just vomit everywhere. Things just explode. 
how far can I take this? And so we just get to do this. Yeah, I'll take a nickel. Yeah, what do we got? Oh, you're fucked. You are fucked. Oh, he is very fucked. So obviously you're not going to have these items on the first floor, all three of them. But I, I, the goal is here is to crash the game, right? So we're not we're not going super in-depth with this. Fuck, fuck off. Die. Oh, you are a bitch. You're a whore and a bitch, and I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Come here. Come here. Die. Yes. Thank you. I wasn't feeling strong enough. I think I need to be a little bit stronger. The goal is for the game to crash, right? And that's that's my goal, because that's that's the fun of this game for me, is just breaking it to the extreme. And I don't want to... Now, there's a lot for this game I should probably explain if I'm doing this on it. Because this game's complicated, right? And I, I, I think I spoke on that in the, in the script. A lot of complicated stuff. There's a lot of things that go into this game. And I know a lot of it already. And there's things I don't know, to be fair. But I know a lot of it. So I'm going to be acting as if everyone also knows this stuff. I'll explain certain things, but I'll try to keep the explain to a minimum and the fun to a maximum. I don't want to see room there. I'm not sure. See room is definitely there, though. Hold on. Yeah, it's definitely here. Oh, I knew it. I'm a genius. Well, game, that's pretty funny. It's like I can fucking get any of those. Fuck you. Ooh, what would Continuum do? Oh, I gotta get Continuum. By the way, also, when this run ends, and if it's not broken, I'm just gonna get myself as many items as possible to break it. We're we're, we're not stopping until I, this game explodes. I really want this. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it. I'm bad at decision making. I have 17 damage. <laughs> oh, who's the boss? Who's the unlucky fella? Die! <laughs> god, that is instant death. Oh my god, that is instantaneous. More damage? Yeah! Uh, more! Give it to me! Back. I'm actually swimming special fetus tears. Fetus tears. Okay. What? What the hell? What the f what? Okay. This is a new I've never used this. I don't know if I like it or not. Alright. Woo! <laughs> Nope, this is the best item. This is, we did it. We, we beat, we won. We beat everything. The game is won. Oh, I could birth so many children. No, the coin. Boom. Boom. Yeah, you know, I just don't want to ever be hit again. What that does is all my shots now block other tears. And you know how I could just cover the screen. Like that. Go get them. Good. <laughs> my children, go. <laughs> <laughs> you know the image of the guy just throwing a scarab, which is whatever, go my scarab. Well, yeah. Fat baby. <laughs> large, large, gunky baby. Ooh, Bob! Ooh, what would Continuum do? You don't say. It oh, infinite baby. <laughs> the infinite baby side. <laughs> What is this game, dude? I have an honor here. Go. Go, my children. Go. Do what do what must be done. Go. Go. Go, my babies. Go. 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 That's it. Go, my rotating babies. Go. Why, baby? Why, baby? What is what is happening? Wait, what the hell? Oh, I broke it. What the fuck is going on? You can see the shadows of them. Tears. What the hell? Are they so high up? Are they just slowly coming down? I see them. <laughs> okay, wait. If okay, 
Beijing. I just, I, I have to know. So one baby. Oh. <laughs> baby star. Oh no. Oh no. I'm just a fucking storm. We're going to the void. We're going to the void. I have to. I have to. I have to. I have to know. I have to. Why is <laughs> what? I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't understand. Baby, go. Meow. Although I don't know if I comprehend what is going on. Baby storm. Oh, do I fucking hate? What the hell? We're just gonna. I. What is going on? What is happening? What is, what, is, what is going on? What, ow! What is happening? Why are the poops spawning? <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. I'm just, ow! Stop! What is happening? Why are there poops just spawning everywhere? <laughs> what? 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 Is this God? Am I fighting God? When can I leave the room? Please! Ow! It's gonna kill me! Convert it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm that glad I had that. What the fuck? Oh my. Go, my baby army. What will you do? <laughs> Infinite babies, maximum speed. I can't. I, <laughs> Die, buddy. What are you going to. Why did that spawn? I have to know. Like, is it is it everything I think it is? Or is this going to be like. Oh, fuck you. No, I understand now. I understand just well. Okay, moving on. Hey guys, sorry. Oh, have I done it? Is Hemalacrid just the item that always breaks this game? Well... Hmm. This is fine. Nothing's wrong here. I'm not touching my keyboard. I... What? Oh. Okay. What? Uh. Uh. Oh. Uh. Oh. 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 New. Oh. oh, oh. They're speeding up. They're what the fuck? The game's gonna. Oh, it might crash now. This might be the moment it crashes. Oh my god, they're just getting faster. What? <laughs> I. What is happening? Are they multiplying more? Are they not despawning? I'm not touching my keyboard at all. That was not me moving. That's the game. Ooh, I did reaching mock speed. I I don't understand. Where am I? Oh, I'm over there. Oh no, I'm not anymore. <laughs> Knock me out of the room. Okay, here. You know what? We'll do a test. Ready? We'll do it. Here. All right, ready. It's forty minutes, forty forty eight is when we start. Oh, don't you? Hmm. I have an idea. Give God baseball. God. The Holy Ring. It's beginning. Oh, oh my god. I spawn a fucking conceivable universe. I'm gonna have an aneurysm. I don't understand it. I don't. I don't. This could be. I should have just made this its own video. I. 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 I 
don't know anymore! Why are they diamonds? Ipecac. Well, don't mind if I do give myself Ipecac. What will this do? Oh. The game started lagging real bad. I think I made a black hole in the corner. I think there's a black hole in the corner. I don't know what's going on. It's green and purple. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. It's okay. This might crash. We might be done. This might be it. Oh no. I'm getting like three frames per second. What? Check the time. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. It's it's chugging. Oh, we got it. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. Here we go. Um, what am I looking for? Give fruit cake. And let's remove, just for now, Ipecac. Let's just, oh. There's eyeballs now? Okay. And I think this... Oh, I can't escape. This is where we end it. It's been a good run. And I think that's it. Um, I'm starting to realize that in the process of doing this and thinking about the ending process, this might be like two-thirds of the video. And if it is, I'm very sorry, but it flows to the point of the video that I want to talk about, and that is I adore this game for that specific reason, those items. Because obviously you're not going to get that run every time, but shit like that can just happen. And it's more likely than you think, which is fucking great. Like, oh god, I can't stress enough how much I adore this game for that simple reason of its items alone. Like, there's other things that make it really cool, and especially since I've been a fan of it for so long, I've been with the community, I, I've followed the developer for ages now, and I've supported a lot of their stuff. I still keep up with the game through the card game too, I love that. Like, but this is something else, man. This is a... People were impressed with Noita. And it's every pixel week's which is impressive, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is more impressive, I don't know which one to play with Noita. But what I want to say is that no game has ever, bit for me, been able to do what this game can in terms of its items. And that is beautiful. And so I hope that this, however long this section was, was a joy for you to watch, and you enjoyed it just as much as I did. And back to whatever scripted recording uh, I have in the future, or the past, I don't know. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I'm gonna throw up. Now, I do want to point out that my view of these games is not what others are. Some might find Risk Rain 2 to be the best game ever. Some people might not like Hades. Some people might fucking despise The Binding of Isaac. And all of these are fair opinions. But, from a game standpoint, I feel that the qualities each game exhibits all make them very good and very worth playing. If you are a roguelike enjoyer, I'd highly recommend all of them. I'd say Hades is a good starting point, it's not terribly hard early on, and I feel like it's the easiest way to get into roguelikes if you aren't super versed in the genre. Risk of Rain 2 is good for those who are into roguelikes and want a fun, consistent gameplay loop. I don't really recommend Isaac to anybody, since while I do love it, it's weird, unorthodox, and way too complex, but I love it all the same. And I also do think that there are other roguelikes that fit into the categories that I discussed in this video, it's just that these are the ones that I find fit them best. And that about wraps it up. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you would like to hit the like button and subscribe, that would be great. If you don't, that's fine. And I do want to start doing something fun. I want to ask a question every video and just let you guys leave the, your answers in the comments. It gives me insight to what you guys enjoy. Um, and so today's question will be, what is your favorite genre of game and what's the main reason you find that genre fun? All right, well, that's all I wrote. I'll see everybody in the next video.